taste in music that recalls the Boston Tea Party. Sing them along with Mitch Miller tonight at 8.30 here on Channel 4. Next news, 12.55. <laughs> The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. It's time now to play your hunt. The first half of which is brought to you by Spring Cigarettes, the most desirable cigarette for you to smoke. And now here's the star of Play Your Hunt, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. How are you? It's Friday in New York, and it's a kind of a glompy Friday. We'll try to brighten it up for you all over the country today as we play your hunch. Let's meet our first players from Chase City, Virginia, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Wilson. Good morning again. The Wilsons are doing a little bit better now. They've, they've won $87.50. <laughs> That's fine. Mr. Wilson covers floors, elegantly, I am sure. Mrs. Wilson is a homemaker and a mother of two. Right. Good. Now, let's say hello to your opponent from Irving, Massachusetts, Mr. and Mrs. David Stone. Uh, the Stones have won $100. Mr. Stone, you're in the paper manufacturing business. What do you actually manufacture? Uh, what well, product? Sir, we manufacture the homespun napkins and paper towels for the home Very and good. the surveyed napkins. That's the uh, main resale item for Irving Paper Mills. Very good, and uh, that'll be a slight charge for that mention. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Stone has one youngster, and uh, I think she is expecting another. Now, we had a little problem with Mrs. Stone yesterday, for those of you who watch regularly. Mrs. Stone, as most gals do who are expecting the store, had a wild yearning for something to eat. Well, we decided we were not going to let you go unsatisfied. Johnny, would you bring out a little something for Mrs. Stone to nibble on during the show today? Oh, there you go. There you go. That's not all. That's not all. There's more. There's more. And... <laughs> Pickles and an ice cream sundae, all right? And a girl. You'll, we'll take care of our guests here. We'll be playing our first round of Player Hunch in a moment. But first, let me ask you this. Is there a more desirable cigarette for you? The answer is yes. Has it happened to you yet? Has it happened that your taste says smoke light, smoke light? Has it happened? Has your inner voice said smoke light, smoke light? Has it happened that you long for a lighter tasting, more desirable cigarette? Is there such a cigarette? Desirable cigarette? There is such a cigarette. Spring. Most desirable cigarette for you to smoke. Desirable. Longer filter. Compare. Springs extra filter length lightens the smoke, smooths the taste. Desirable. Springs lighter tobaccos. Of every six tobacco leaves, only one is light enough. Lightest menthol, too. Has it happened to you yet? Do you long for a more desirable cigarette? No spring, spring cigarette. Lighter taste proves spring. Most desirable cigarette for you to smoke. Smoke, spring, smoke. Spring cigarette. You won't believe this. Uh, Mrs. Stone is running true to form. She said, oh, I'll save the Sunday for later, but leave the pickles. <laughs> Word of honor. Time has come now, ladies, to play your hunch. Each time you play your hunch correctly, you win a point. Each point is worth $50. Three points wins the game for a total of $150 and the right to stay on and meet new competition. For our first problem, you will notice that your husbands have... Oh, the score, the score. The score is two for the Stones and one for the Wilsons. You will notice you have lost your husband, but only temporarily. Our first problem is to find out how well you gals know your husband's taste when it comes to clothes in which to relax. Mrs. Nelson uh, Wilson. Mrs. Wilson, will you play your pass? I'll play. Very good. Johnny, may we have those three beautiful sports shirts? Here they are, three rather attractive men's sports shirts. Um, let me see. This first one is a multicolored cotton plaid. The second one is, let me see, oh, that's burlap, is it not? Yes, a burlap treatment in a shirt and very attractive. And it's a neutral color. And this is a striped shirt, a cotton stripe. 
Now, here's the problem, Mrs. Wilson. We'll ask you to determine which of these three shirts you think your husband will select. If he selects the same one you think he will select, he will not only get the shirt, but you will win a point. He cannot hear us. He is in a soundproof booth. Will you now make a choice? Which one do you think your husband would select? This plaid, this burlap, or the stripe? I think it's the burlap. You think your husband will pick the burlap? All right, let me just move him around a little bit here. And now, Johnny, if you will, will you ask Mr. Wilson to come back on stage? Here comes Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you will notice three rather attractive men's sport shirts displayed here for you. We're going to ask you to pick one. See which one you think you would like to take home with you. Uh, which one would you like? The burlap shirt, very attractive. There's a cotton stripe and there's a cotton plaid. Which of the three would you, uh... Why? You mean the middle shirt, the striped shirt? The shirt, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't tell you this, but this was a test of taste to see if your taste matched your wife or whether your wife's could match yours. <laughs> unfortunately, you did not match. You lose the point, but uh, we'll try again later. You sit right back down again. Now, let's see, you picked this one, didn't yes, you, Mrs. Sir, Wilson? Did. So we'll have to remove this. Now, Mrs. Stone, you have the chance. Which of the two remaining shirts do you think your husband will pick? I think he'd pick the plaid one. You think he would pick the plaid one, this one over here on the end. Let me just reverse their positions and ask now for Mr. Stone to come on out. Here comes Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone, as you get around to your position, you will notice two attractive men's sports shirts. They're both cotton. One is a plaid, one is a stripe. Which one would you select for yourself? I'd select the closest one to me, the red one. The red, red plaid. Red and blue and mm -hmm. yellow. By golly, there you go. <laughs> Not only have you won the point, you have won the game. You and Mrs. Stone are our new champions. And you also win the plaid shirt because your taste, uh, the taste of your wife, matched yours. Congratulations. <laughs> well. Don't cry. I'm delighted to have known you, too, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. You've already won $87.50. You've won our hearts, too. Thank you so much for being with us. We've I'm had a wonderful time. Thank you very much. You'll meet, you'll, meet some new <laughs> we'll meet some new competition for the Stones in just a moment. But right now, here's some news from Borden's about nature's most nearly perfect food. Elsie has a secret for you. You want to grow up big and strong like your daddy? Mm -hmm. Then follow me. La, 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 la. Here's the secret. Borden's homogenized milk. My mom gives me Borden's and I drink up every drop. Of course you do. That's because it tastes so good. Now let's see you drink this big glass all up just for Elsie. You were a tiny one. Milk was working for you. Nourishing, strengthening, building. And Borden's homogenized milk has extra vitamin D. Do you know what extra vitamin D is for? Mm-hmm. To make milk taste extra good with cookies. And it makes you grow very big and strong. Like Daddy. Uh-huh. All right, now, for the Stones, say hello to your new competition from Rancho Cordova, California, Captain and Mrs. Charles E. Wheeler. <laughs> Captain, sir, Miss Wheeler, I'm delighted to have you with us. Uh, you're in the Air Force, Captain? Yes, sir. In what, uh, what part? I'm with uh, Strategic Air Command. Oh, with the that? Out of Mayfair Air Force Base in Sacramento. Very good, very good. How long have you kids been married, Miss Wheeler? Four years yesterday. Really? Yes. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. The Wheelers have, the Wheelers have two youngsters. I'm curious, you are from Rancho Cordova. Now, where is that? Near Sacramento, is it? 13 miles west. Uh-huh. Lovely country, lovely country. All right, we're all set to play our next round. Uh, to my left, you will notice a sign which reads, Day and Night. Is that correct? Okay, 
What is in a name? Well, we're going to give you a chance to find out. Uh, Captain and Mrs. Wheeler, will you play or pass? We'll play. Good for you. Let's bring in our people, please. Here are three people. Each one of them is connected in some way with these words, day and night. Two of them are, are, are really making up their stories. The third one will be giving you the true facts about why he or she is connected with the words day or night. All right? Listen very carefully. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What is your name, please? Roy Day. Mr. Day, how are you connected with day and or night? I'm one of the heads of the day-night burglar proofing company. The day-night burglar proofing company. Right. Uh, what are, uh, you sell systems, do you? We, we sell, design, and install systems. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Day. Now then, let's find out who this gentleman is. Your name, My sir? My name is Dr. Knight. Dr. Knight? Yes. And uh, what kind of a doctor are you, sir? I am uh, run the day-night bird hospital. The what? The day-night bird hospital. The day-night bird hospital? Uh -huh. Oh, it's a hospital for birds, for I birds. assume. That's right. How many beds do you, or uh, how many cages do you have? We don't have cages. We put them in wards. You put the birds in That's wards. Right. Why do you call it the day-night? Well, because, well, we, we can service any sick bird at any time during the day or the night. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Knight. Now, let's find out about you, my dear. What do the words day and night mean to you? Well, day and night is the name of my nightclub act. Oh, ho. And I'm part of a knife throwing act. When the act opens, I'm A knife throwing act? Right. Go on. When the act opens, I'm standing in the daylight this way, waiting for him to just throw knives at me. Just like this. You stand just this way. Suddenly it changes. You stand this way ever? <laughs> and, uh, I'm in the dark, and he's in the light. Therefore, the name night and day. He throws knives at you in the dark? <laughs> well... Any wounds you'd like to do? Oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Here are three people. Each of them claims to have some relationship with day and night. Actually, only one of them was giving you the real facts, Captain and Mrs. Wheeler. It is now for you to determine which one was not fibbing. Was it Mr. X? Was it Mr. Y? Dr. Y? Or was it Lady Z? I like Mr. X. I agree, X. X. Any reason? He just... I like his eyes. You like his eyes? <laughs> no kidding. I've heard all kinds of reasons before, but never I like his eyes. Mr. X, Miss Wheeler likes your eyes. May I ask you, sir, are you then connected with the uh, day-night uh, burglar alarm thing? <laughs> I am. My name is Roy Day. The captain and Mrs. Wheeler have gotten off to a fine start. You've won a point. Congratulations. I, I, uh, uh, I'm very surprised because I thought the other two did very, very well. Now, do tell me about your business. You do really bur you sell burglar alarms, things of that kind. Our, our slogan is prevention is our intention. We work and operate in Manhattan. Prevention is our intention. That's right. Very good. And I'm a member of the National Burglar Alarm and Fire Association that operates throughout the country. Very good. You have one other slogan, I am told. What is that? Hooks Crooks. <laughs> Hooks Crooks. <laughs> good. Nice to meet you, sir. Now, let's find out who you are. My name is Gene Meenan. Gene, uh, of course, you don't have anything to do with birds. Not at all. What do you do? I'm a salesman for the KCS company. Very good. What do they manufacture? They manufacture displays. Good. Nice to know you. And my pretty thing, who are you? Lorraine Rosenberg. Has anybody ever thrown a knife at you, Lorraine Rosenberg? I hope not. I hope not, too. What do you do? Uh, I'm an instructor in a charm and modeling school. A suburban girl in Hewlett. Good. Nice to have had you on. Nice to have had you all on. Thank you for playing your hunch this morning. Another problem coming up. Score now stands at one for Captain and Mrs. Wheeler to nothing for the Stones. Let's welcome the sponsors for our second half, John. Right, Robert. The second half of Play Your Hunch is brought to you by the Colgate Palm Olive Company, makers of new heavy-duty fab for a wash that's not just detergent clean, but clean clear through. And by Ajax Floor and Wall Cleaner, the new powder that really cuts big jobs down to size. Cleaning my kitchen floor seems like cleaning Grand Central Station. Here, now you can cut that big job down to size with new Ajax floor and wall cleaner with ammonia. Watch, we'll test these two solutions. New Ajax floor and wall cleaner with ammonia and today's leading brand on this extra dirty floor tile. Everything's the same except the results. Yes, Ajax puts the pow in powder. Try new Ajax floor and wall cleaner with ammonia. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Captain Mrs. Wheeler just said, the captain turned to Mrs. Wheeler and said, well, that $50 takes care of our anniversary dinner last night. I'm glad, I'm glad that happened. Now then, we have a, a, a kind of a fun problem for you coming up now. We like to introduce to you uh, occasionally some of the people who are good enough to come to see our show here at NBC. And uh, we've got a kind of a come closer problem which will involve these members of our studio audience. So panelists, will you get your uh, slates and chalk, please? What I'm going to do is ask these lovely people to display their wealth. What you must determine is how many of these one, two, three, four, seven people have got actual change for a quarter. Now, that may sound easy, but believe me, it's not. How many times have you asked someone for change of a quarter? Think that over. How many times have they had it? All right? Now, to give you a little bit of a hint, uh, I think we'll ask you to... Would you shake your purse? Thank you, dear. Would you shake your change, please? Thank you. Would you shake your purse? Thank you. Would you shake yours? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that's a jolly jingle. Oh, that sounds pretty good. All righty. Now then, let's see. Uh, well, you, you have five seconds now to determine how many of these seven have changed for a quarter. Mark your slate, please. You have five seconds. All righty now, let's find out. First place, what's your name? Alberta Downey. Where are you from, Alberta? Bridgewood, uh, New Jersey. Bridgewood, California, where are you going to I used to be from California. All right, How, have you got change of a quarter, please? Yes, I do have. You do? Let me see, just to be sure. Yes, you do. Yes, okay. you do. Okay, excuse me, would you step, would you each take one step back so that you can, thank you so much. What is your name? Harold Downey. Oh, Harold Downey. And you're from Ridgefield? Ridgewood. Ridgewood, California. New Jersey. Okay. Have you got change for a quarter, Harold? Yes, I do. Let me see. Yes, by golly, you do. Good for you. Take one step back, and you are... Jacqueline James. Hi, Jacqueline James. Hi, how are you? Where are you from? Miami. Good. Well, that's a nice place, too. You got change for a quarter? Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot to collect the others, too. I Excuse me. Slight charge for being on the show today. <laughs> no, this goes to one of my favorite charities. The Robert Q. Lewis Foundation. Your name is? Helen Decker. Hi, Helen. Where are you from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Got a change of a quarter? <laughs> yes, I do. Just hand it over, please. <laughs> do, 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 do. The only way I can make a living. Thank you. <laughs> you do? Your name? Francisca Thurston. Francisca Thurston. Where are you from, Francisca? Originally from Germany, but now Baltimore. Hiya. Ah, yeah. Welcome yeah. to America. Got a change for a quarter? Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five so far. Uh, yes, sir, your name? Joseph Petropoli. Hi, Joseph. From McLean, Virginia. Good. Got change for quarters? No. Yes, I have. some threads in there. Mm. There we are. Oh, yeah, you got it. By golly, it's very loaded on it. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Your name? Kenneth Kenyon. Kenneth, have you got change for quarters? Where are you from? Uh, Warren, Rhode Island. Warren, Rhode yes. Island. Lovely state. Have you got change for quarters? No, I haven't. Let me see. Trust him here. Yeah. Ten. Fourteen. No, you haven't done it. Well, I'll just take the quarter itself. But anyway, <laughs> of the seven, of the seven, six of these folks had change for a quarter. May I see your slates, please? We'll see who came closer. Oh, it's a standoff. <laughs> the Stone said five and the Wheelers said five. It's a complete standoff. We, uh, nobody wins this one, uh, but I tell you what, I cannot thank you folks from our audience enough, and I can promise you that I will really take this money, you know, and use it very happily. <laughs> thank you, but you're not going to get this back. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Will you, all, will you all see if you can get your quarters back later? Thank you. And if you'll all exit over there, thank you so much for being on Play Your Hind. What, what, what? Five dollars each they get? Well, then give me the quarters back. <laughs> <laughs> well, now listen and hear what you heavy duty fab can do for you. This is a ping pong ball, and these are four ladies who've just examined towels washed in special laundry tests. Ladies? Well, fab won every test, but what's the ball? Well, we tested fab against a test detergent exactly like fab's but without Fab's extra laundry dish, and Fab won every test. Oh, please, what's the ball for? To show you why Fab won every time. 
Why Fab Guest Wash not just detergent clean, but clean clear through? Look, the detergent granule has only one laundry ingredient. But Fab has more than just a detergent. Add one, two, three, four, five extra laundry things to get wash not just detergent clean, but clean clear through. No wonder the Fab Wash comes out cleaner. Yes, Fab gets washed not just detergent clean, but clean clear through. Fab. <laughs> Panel, our next problem has to do with an actor who refuses to follow a script. Do you play or pass, Mr. and Mrs. Stone? We'll play. Okay. May I have our actors, please? Here are three young people. They are all studying Spanish. Uh, and there's a student at a high school in New Jersey. Now then, uh, they will all read for you from uh, a play, a Spanish play. It has to do with uh, a family that objects to a young man who wants to marry their daughter. Now then, this radio play will be enacted by all three young people. However, two of them will be reading from the script of the play. The third person will be ad-libbing completely and will be saying things that have nothing whatsoever to do with the play. That is the problem. Who is ad-libbing in Spanish? All right, may we start with the uh, play, please, to begin. Miss X or whoever. Este es el cuento de los tres osos. Es verdad lo que acaba de decir el señor. Hasta cierto punto. El punto de los zapatos es el mejor. Tiene más importancia que el de los calcetines. Dispénseme usted si me atrevo a intervenir. Pero las divas sin batir que me han inspirado usted. Y los zapatos de mis tías han engordarse. Divas sin batir. Gracias. Me muevan a dar a usted un consejo. Crea usted, señorita, que las que yo he sentido hace usted. ¿Qué ver ese pájaro las ha comido? Gracias. Aunque no parece natural que una joven aconseje a un caballero tan inteligente como usted... Señorita. Señor. Le diré a usted, aunque le parezca una... Well, oh, gracias, indeed, señor. And señores. Muchos gracias to you all. Now, the problem is, Mr. and Mrs. Stone, which of these three young people was ad-libbing completely? Was it... Lady X, was it Mr. Y, or was it Miss Z? I think Z. You think Z, Mr. I Stone? Why? And Mr. I Stone really says why. What'd you say, sir? I really don't know why. I could hear some Castilian come out of there, but that, that's about all. Well, they were all speaking Spanish. Let I me know. point that out. The problem is who had no script in front of him or her? I don't know. Uh, what? What do you say, honey? Z is just a hunch. That's wrong. <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Stone? I'm guessing on Y. I'll go along with Y, then. You both go along with Y. Mr. Y, sir, if you have a script, would you hold it up, please? By golly, he does have a script. I'm sorry, Mr. Miss Stone. All right, Captain and Mrs. Wheeler, you have a choice of either Miss X or Miss Z. Which one do you think? X. You think X. How I'll do you feel, to, Captain? I'll have to say X. I don't know Spanish. I couldn't say. <laughs> All right. Very well. All right. You both agree then on Lady X. Lady X, if you have a script, will you hold it up, please? No script? Let me see. <laughs> By golly, the Captain and Mrs. Wheeler of one another. There you go. Very good. Well, now let's find out who these young people are. Uh, 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 in the first place, Grasha is so much, senior reader. <laughs> How's that act, Ken? <laughs> well, I'd say it was atrocious. Uh, <laughs> you have to be quite so candid. What is your name, my dear? Carol Peters. Carol, where are you from? Ridgewood, New Jersey. And what was in, what, 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 what were you, you were at living in, what were you saying? Well, you? first I said this is the story of the three bears. <laughs> oh, boy, what else? And, uh, I also said that the shoes of my aunt are getting much fatter. The shoes of your aunt are getting fatter? That's right. Now I've heard of all kinds of things. That's beautiful. Do you say anything else? Well, um, I said that the point about the shoes was much more interesting than the one about the socks. 
<laughs> All right, you've made some salient points. Did I get your name? Yes. Carol Peters. Carol. Of course. Thank you, Carol. Let's find out who Mr. Y is. Richard Grassley. Richard, welcome to the show. Where do you guys and gals all go to school? Ridgewood High School in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And what was the name of this play? Uyendo del Perejil. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Uyendo del Perejil. Would you mind translating that, please, into English? It means fleeing from the parsley. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, would you mind repeating? <laughs> fleeing from the parsley. Fleeing from the parsley? Yes. Would you say it again in Spanish? I like it better that way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Miss Z, what is your name? Susan Downing. Susan, who's your instructor at the high school? Mr. Gomez. Mr. Gomez. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank you all. You were all delightful. We thank you very much for being on Play Your High. <laughs> you know, right now, stores have a large selection of singing canaries. And here's the word on that from Hearts Mountain. They say you can't buy happiness. But the cheerful, beautiful song of a canary certainly proves differently. Yes, today, millions of people, young and old, in every walk of life, have canaries. Because a canary is a pet that brings happiness into every home. And now's a good time for you to get one, too. Stores have a wonderful selection of singers to choose from. And when you buy your new pet, don't forget to bring home the famous Hearts Mountain Balanced Diet. These three products make up the diet that is your best guarantee of raising a happier, healthier pet. It takes an expert to tell the quality of bird foods. So the only way to be sure you're buying the best is to buy Hearts Mountain. Bring more happiness into your home with a canary for a pet. And keep your canary cheerful and beautiful and full of song with Hearts Mountain, the most trusted name in bird foods. Panel of fast, come closer. We have time for it. Get out your sl uh, slots and shake. <laughs> Place and talk. Now then, here is an ordinary pack of king-size cigarettes. Actually, they're not ordinary. They're quite desirable. However, take a good look at this pack. There are 20 cigarettes in the pack. On your slate, please write down how long you think a full pack of king-size cigarettes would be when the cigarettes were laid end to end. The team that comes closer to the actual length in inches wins. All right, on your marks, remember when I say end to end, I mean that way. On your marks, get set, go. Time is up, mark your slate, please. Okie doke. Now then, may I see, please, our reveal on that, Johnny. I should like to see exactly how long 20 king-size cigarettes would be laid end to end. May I see the reveal, please? Would be exactly 66 inches. May I see your slates, both of you. Mr. and Mrs. Stone say 63 inches. The wheelers say 75 inches. The Stones win the point. Very good. We'll return in a minute, but first, coming up, an important message. How I Met My Husband. That's me, eight years ago. Oh, sorry. Guess we're stuck. <laughs> Coffee? Like this, without any makeup? You look lovely without makeup. That's how we met, and every day I thank Cashmere Bouquet for helping my skin have beauty that won't wash off. Beauty that lasts when makeup is gone. Cashmere Bouquet for beauty that won't wash off. Oh, hello there. Uh, this was a full plate of pickles when we started, Mrs. Stone. Look what happened. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. We'll see you Monday on Play Your Hunt. <laughs> Play Your Hunt is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Nice to meet you, Russ. See the Circus Schumann from Copenhagen on International Showtime with Don Amici tonight at 7.30, 6.30 Central Time on NBC. Some people hide it in a drawer, others behind closed doors, because those boxes are so ugly to look at. But now, a wonderful new idea changes all that. The Hudson Golden Showcase. Watch, you just slip off the wrapper, printing comes off with it, and you have a lovely Hudson Golden Showcase. Beautiful enough for your bedroom, kitchen, bathroom. Inside the Golden Showcase, Hudson Facial Tissue, as soft and gentle as a snowfall. It comes in white or pastel shades and is unsurpassed in wet strength. The Golden Showcase is another exciting first from Hudson, 
makers of fine paper products. You just slip off the wrapper. And you have a lovely Hudson Golden Showcase with the Fleur de Lis pattern by Hudson. New orange-flavored children's bufferin relieves pain and fever of colds. Children's bufferin. Next News 1255, Channel 4. <laughs> The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Today, these four bargain homes.